Now, your forecast first, sponsored by Natax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. And, uh, as we head into the middle of the work week, we're going to see a lot more of what we've been seeing here over the first two days of the work week. Sunshine, heat, and humidity, and yeah, a lot of clear skies for the morning. A few more clouds are on the way by the afternoon. And just like the past few mornings, we're warm and muggy with upper 60s and lower 70s for your current temperatures. We'll get back into more of the lower 90s, but a few more extra clouds will be around towards the latter part of the day. And then for tomorrow, guess what? we got some rain chances that are on their way in here. That's not what's going to be coming around with Hurricane Laura, but we'll give you the latest on what uh, that hurricane will be doing, how it will track into our area, and talk about the cool down ahead for the weekend here in a bit. Christy and Mac, happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday, Adam. Danville crews have officially left the scene of a fire. They had been working to contain that fire at an apartment complex. That's right. It happened near Lewis Lane and Fairchild Street. WCI3's Karina Rubio joins us live from that scene with more this morning. Karina, what can you tell us? Well, Mac firefighters opened Fairchild Street back up at the corner of Fairchild and Lewis Lane, and the fire lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant McMahon, tells me that this started as a cooking fire from a stovetop. There's still a strong burning smell lingering in the air around the apartment complex here. Lieutenant McMahon says it's all under control. They were able to contain the fire just to one apartment. It did not spread to any other units in the building, and no one was hurt in this fire but they did have an ambulance on scene just in case. Reporting live in Danville, Karina Rubio, WCI3, your local news leader. Well, a three-year-old in Springfield is recovering after an accidental shooting. That's what police are saying at this time. It happened near Sequoia and Buckeye Drives, and the child was taken to the hospital. Neighbors say they didn't hear any shots. In fact, they say they didn't even realize anything was happening until police and other first responders started showing up. Police are still investigating to make sure that it was, in fact, an accident. An 18-year-old is in custody in connection with multiple gun-related incidents in Springfield. Officers responded to a shots fired complaint on Cedar Street near South MLK Drive, North 12th, and Reservoir Street. Now, they later found a car crashed on North 11th Street and saw people running away from it, and one of them was confronted by an officer. Police say that's when Larry French took out a gun and then pointed it at the officer. Authorities say they were able to arrest him. New this morning, a woman who drove her car off the Bradley Avenue Bridge is set to be sentenced today. Asia Marshall faces up to 10 years in prison if she's convicted. She drove her Jeep off of the unfinished bridge, hitting a barrier on the interstate last September. There were two passengers in the SUV with her. They were both hurt. Her blood alcohol level was nearly three times the legal limit. Well, here's a look at how things are shaping up for us early this morning on your Roofing Dog INET Weather Camera Network. We do have some sunshine. We also have more of that muggy air mass in place, too. Going to be another one of those days where the heat and humidity are going to be around pretty much the entire day. Now, as we take a look at Storm Tracker Doppler, we're not noticing anything as far as rain or clouds. You're going to have to go farther north for that, just like yesterday, where, well, this time it is a little farther north into the east. Some heavier rain and some downpours across parts of Michigan, the Upper Ten Peninsula, and the Lower Peninsula. Rain chances for us, uh, when they eventually do start to arrive, will be coming in from the south. We'll see a few more clouds from the south today as well, and it's going to be coming in with some tropical moisture. This is Hurricane Laura now, and it is heading its way into to the central and now northern Gulf of Mexico, where it could be strengthening to a category three here, possibly sometime soon throughout the course of the day. Right now, it is at a category two hurricane. As far as for us, though, we're out ahead of it, and it's still going to be another hot and humid day with plenty of sunshine. Temperatures already sitting in the upper 60s and look to get even warmer from here. So uh, overall, yeah, the stickiness in the air plus the heat, all of that going to be in place again for your Wednesday. No rain in sight really today either before more of those wet days will be starting to come around starting up tomorrow and starting to last into parts of the weekend, too, where we could see even more on into next work week. We'll let you know how much rain that could lead up to coming up later in the show. Christy and Mac. Thanks, Adam. Starting today, customers at restaurants and bars statewide will have to make some changes. The governor says they'll be required to wear a mask during all interactions with wait staff or any other employees. And this includes both indoor and outdoor seating. WCI3's Jennifer Jensen explains. 
During the COVID-19 pandemic, there are people who have complied with the state regulations and those who have not. If people would exercise good judgment and understand that they're just trying to be uh, courteous, kind, and protect the uh, frontline workers, we wouldn't have to have rules and everything that goes associated with it. Wear a mask. The increase in cases caused Governor Pritzker to require customers of restaurants and bars to wear masks anytime they come in contact with employees. That includes while you're ordering, being delivered food and drinks, and any other time staff serves you. Before, people only had to wear them while entering, exiting, and moving around the area. Sean Baird, owner of Watson Shack and Rail in Champaign, says he's noticed customers have been fairly compliant in the past. People are very receptive to the new rules and everything like that. There's only a few people that don't get it for some reason. Baird is used to the rapidly changing environment of the restaurant business, so he's taking this new rule in stride. Restaurant business is always like this. There's always um, something new getting thrown into the loop, and uh, you're always working on your feet and uh, adapting and changing, so this has clearly been the biggest year for that. Jim Roberts with the Champaign-Urbana Public Health District says the latest mask requirement should be taken seriously by customers and restaurant workers. Businesses are required to have people um, obey what the governor says, and we have that through our ordinance. And so if, if a business owner has people that are not complying with this, they can ask them to leave. CUPHD is encouraging people to follow the guidelines not only for your own safety, but also in consideration for the health safety of people around you. Think of others other than yourself. Think of those frontline workers that are trying to serve you and take care of whatever your needs are. And by helping keep them safe, we keep businesses open, which keeps us all going on the right track. Governor Pritzker has also cracked down on a second region in Illinois. He added new restrictions um, on bars and restaurants in Will and Kankakee counties in particular, where the number of people testing positive for COVID-19 keeps on rising. Metro East and the South Suburbs now have a curfew in place. Bars cannot serve customers inside and they must close by 11 o'clock. Indoor capacity for meetings and social gatherings is also shrinking from 50% down to 25%. Wear a mask. This is not that difficult a thing to do. It is, it is for a period of time. It will end. There are vaccines and treatments that are in development. I think we all have some optimism that by next year we will have those available to us and perhaps we can do away with masks altogether. But in the meantime, masks, social distance, wash your hands. These are just basic, easy things that everybody ought to be doing. Now, the numbers are much better in central Illinois. The Champaign and Decatur region is at 1.6% and Springfield is at 5.5%. That's well below the state's target rate of 8%. Well, the governor also announced an adjustment to the statewide mask mandate. Starting today, servers will ask you to wear a mask while they approach the table, like we just mentioned right there, previously wearing a mask and walking outside the door. We will have more details about that on our website at WCIA.com. Well, Champaign County had another record-setting day of coronavirus cases. And many of those are tests from students returning to the U of I. There are 86 new cases. As 18 more than the day before, according to U of I campus testing data, there were 263 positive cases between last Wednesday and Sunday. The rolling positivity rate from those days is 0.7%. Two people are hospitalized with COVID-19. Well, the state is reporting more than 1,600 brand new cases. That makes more than 223,000 people since the pandemic was first reported. The state positivity rate has dropped for the second straight day to 4.1%. 29 more people have died. Illinois has lost more than 7,900 people to COVID-19. And join us tomorrow night at 6.30 for our special 30-minute reports on COVID-19. It's called Just the Facts. And we're sharing your medical concerns with doctors to see where they are in their fact-finding mission to help curb the spread. Well, you've heard of test driving a car, but what about test driving a crop? Coming up in this morning's report from the farm, Stu Ellis explains how farmers can see how this year's agriculture products are doing before they even hit the ground. We'll be right back.